What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. Today we're gonna cover creating things from a pure function perspective. We're gonna make sure that they follow the three main rules and that is number one, is a function always should return a value. If you look at a function and it doesn't return a value or you just don't know, right? That's pretty indicative that it's not pure. The second is that if you give it the same inputs of one and one, it should always return two, regardless of where it's called in a class, in a browser, a node, doesn't matter. Number three is that if there's a variable outside of itself in the case of function closures or global variables or whatever, that it shouldn't affect the function internally. Vice versa, if you run the function, it shouldn't affect things outside of itself. That's why they call them side effects, but in programming we code like this, so they really mean effects up here or down here if they're variables. So no side effects, both internally and externally. If we follow those three rules, that the function's mostly pure. And that's what we're caring about here is that whole range of purity. The top, you know, where you're fighting with Mr. Popo, all the way down to Corn's Tower at the top where you're meeting Corn, right? We're, we're more about pure enough. What I've done is created a folder here called Pure Simple Examples. And inside of it, we have an index.js. We're not gonna use any libraries today, this pure JavaScript. So I'm gonna do the console log that we normally do. And I'm gonna write the three rules just so we remember what they are. I'm gonna learn how to use a comment in JavaScript. <laughs> so one is always returns a value. If you look at a function and you don't know what it returns, it returns nothing, it's probably not pure. Number two, same input, same output. Doesn't matter what those inputs are, it just matters that if you give them the same things, it should always return the same thing no matter how many times you call the function, where you call it, blah, blah, blah. Third is very, very difficult, no mutable state. So it doesn't mutate state, it doesn't affect global variables, it doesn't affect variables outside of itself. If it's a closure, it doesn't affect things outside the closure. In this case, side effects. If you get something internally, it doesn't mess with stuff and out, outside, that's how you can remember it. This bleeds into a variety of areas. I'm trying to keep it simple for you. So for those three, let's talk about how do we create things? Normally, you create things like this. You do a person, and then you say first name, let's just do a name of Jester Excel and strength of, let's say three. This is a object we created or a variable, but the problem with this is that there's no function. It's not something that I can pass for others to invoke and, and use. The unwritten rule is that it has to be a function. It seems obvious, but I think I should write it just to point it out, is that it must be a function. There are certain things that functions can do that variables cannot. For example, I can't invoke this again, pass this chunk of executing code around. I can pass the variable, but not the actual function that made it. It has to be a function, it's kind of an unwritten rule. So when people say pure functions, they're not talking about pure variable creation. So let's make something that's reasonably pure from a function perspective. We're just gonna create an object. So it's a name, strength, dexterity, and constitution. And this will return that object. So we'll return the name, strength, dexterity, constitution, and hit points. And in our case, we're making a game, so we'll just say, give them the default of 10 plus whatever your constitution is. The higher health or constitution you are, the more hit points you get. Now you'll notice that I'm not doing the whole name, name syntax, right? Nor the strength, strength syntax. If the name is the same, you don't need to do colons. You can just do this and it works. Now, this pure function is a an actual variable at, on its own sake, but it's also a function. So it is a function. It has a return value. If we give it the same name, strength, and dexterity, it'll always return the same thing. And it doesn't mutate anything outside of itself because it gives us a brand new object. And there's no side effects because it's not taking any references outside of strings and numbers, which are always by val. It always creates brand new versions of itself. So in our case, we can create a Jesse get person. Mr. Excel who has two, four, and Albus, man, who is my dog, but he became a werewolf and we're gonna fight or something, I don't know. Now when you log these out, you can see that they are unique objects. Unnode index, and they follow the same rules of unique objects, and each one of these are completely different from each other. There's no outside state beyond just this global function that I've defined in these global variables. So it doesn't affect these things. So this function so far follows the three main rules. A lot of functional programmers drive me crazy because they say you don't need classes. 
but you can do just about everything that we're doing to follow those three same rules with classes. So we'll create a constructor with the name, and I'll make them abbreviating, constitution, say this dot name or this class, this class instance of name, this dot strength equals stir, and this dot dexterity equals dex, and this dot constitution equals con. Then we'll do the exact same thing. We'll just copy pasta coding for the win down here. Get person, we'll say new person. Rerun the code, and we get pretty much the exact same output. The difference is, is that these follow the whole JavaScript naming convention of object prototype. There are classes, with, which is a syntax sugar over top of that. And you can use certain constructs, such as instance of, and other things to say, is this a type of person or things like that. So we're creating our own types, so to speak. In this case, instead of a string or value or date, we're creating a person type. And we can kind of use JavaScript's very primitive ways of doing that. But either way, it follows the same three rules. Is that if I call this constructor function, right, basically the new person, this constructor function with the same inputs, I'm always going to get the same type of class output. Where this starts to break down and where it's not 100% pure is that mutate outside state or have side effects. Well, we're not too worried about the outside state, but it does have massive amounts of side effects. This name and strength do not exist within this function of constructor. They actually exist on the class. So the class is going to create an instance, and these are affecting that instance. So it's not 100% pure, but as you can see, classes themselves are created to contain state. Those instances that you create or the methods around the class kind of contain, contain state. So if you're careful, you can still do pure-ish functions within classes. And you can actually return classes from pure functions. So we could simply just return up here, return new person with name, strength, dexterity, constitution. And voila, we'll go back to our get person. And yet again, we can now have a pure function that doesn't necessarily <laughs> affect outside state. That is basically how you create things following those three main rules, whether you're using objects or classes or factory functions around those classes. Now, when I first started learning functional programming around pure functions and all these things, I used to get really irritated when they would say that you don't need classes. And I'd say, well, what do you use? And they would respond functions with this like clever smirk how they knew something and you didn't, or they were waiting for you to have some epiphany of learning something. It used to drive me bonkers, this holier than thou attitude. You can use classes, it's fine, React does it, and they Facebook and the React community is very big around functional and they're okay. So it's okay to use classes with pure function. However, after doing this for a while, you're gonna find that you'll use probably less and less classes because the functions that you create and create that data, you find a place to store it. If you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments and hope this was helpful. As usual, see you on the morrow.